Precision exposures can help investors express their views on a region or a country-specific market, and iShares has the industry's largest country ETF suite in the U.S. with 61 funds and almost $60 billion in AUM, offering the potential for investors to target growth while also seeking some portfolio diversification. Combining U.S. and international investments can result in better portfolio diversification and potentially a reduction in the volatility of your portfolio for the long run. Today, we're going to hear from Tanya Chanda, iShares International ETF Product Strategist, and Anna Harris, Head of MSCI Global Market Cap Index Products. Whether you're already invested in international ETFs or have been a bit of a skeptic, Investors really do need to adapt to this constantly changing world. So let's get started. In recent years, sticking to the U.S. has worked really pretty well for investors. So maybe starting with you, Anna, why should investors be rethinking their approach to international stocks? Thank you, Dave. Yes, indeed, U.S. has done well for investors. But at the same time, on the back of that strong performance, advisors are looking at the role of international markets in, into their portfolios. So over the last 20 years, the U.S. has outperformed most markets on the back of globalization and increased trade. But as we see some of those trends reverse, uh, as we see that the reverse of the globalization and, and potentially a, a less reliance on global supply chains, we might see other regions and other markets outperform. Another reason why advisors might be looking at other markets outside the US is just basic diversification, the exposure to other themes, other topics into their portfolios that they might not get from domestic exposures. What we've seen as well over the last few years is correlations decreasing between the US and other markets uh, that would potentially give an opportunity for advisors to, to reduce risk or, or maybe even enhance returns. Tanya, thoughts? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Given the trends towards deglobalization, we believe correlations will continue to decline. Effects from COVID disruptions to trade tensions may push companies dependent on international supply chains to bring those supply chains back into one's home country. In this case, increased diversification becomes a key feature of international investing. And consider how rapidly the global economy has grown over the last 20 years. The rest of the world makes up 85% of GDP and 96% of the world's population. In fact, in China and India alone, there are 1.2 billion people that have yet to access the internet. That's over a billion people that have never made a mobile payment, liked, tweeted, or streamed anything. These are the activities that have driven the impressive returns of US equities over the last couple of years. And now they're coming to the rest of the world at a time when US investors are significantly underweight towards global equities. So, but what about those risks in the U.S. stock market? Are there like recent dynamics which investors should consider when evaluating sort of U.S. versus international equity allocations? Anna? Totally. Uh, one of the things we've observed in, in the U.S. stock market is the increase of, of stock level concentration. So by that, we mean uh, that the performance of domestic indexes is getting driven by more and more by a smaller and smaller number uh, of names. And we've seen that with companies in uh, technology and consumer in the U.S. Uh, that uh, phenomenon is also apparent in other markets, but to a much, a much lower extent. The other risk uh, that we think about when we think about U.S. markets is valuations. Um, our research has shown that um, potential returns can depend of where your valuation is at that moment in time. And at the moment, what we see is that other markets outside the U.S. are relatively cheaper which can provide opportunities for investors. I, I mean, you mentioned this concentration we have in domestic stocks, and you're right, it's kind of eye-popping. How are you seeing that play, play out? Indeed. Um, home bias or the preference of a domestic uh, market relative to international markets is present in the U.S., but is also present uh, internationally in other markets in other regions. And uh, what we've seen from our research is having a global diversified index or global diversified portfolio can provide benefits for investors from risk. Uh, reduction or, or return potential. By having a home bias, by having a preference for the domestic market, investors in the US by maybe missing out on those opportunities. Tanya? A recent BlackRock analysis of over 20,000 financial professionals model portfolios indicated that the average advisor is significantly overweight to US stocks, 
versus the MSCI All Country World Index, a broad global equity benchmark. The average international equity allocation for U.S. financial advisors' equity sleeve is around 25%, versus the weight of international markets in the MSCI Acqui Index at 43%. What this means is an investor could potentially be missing out on the diversification benefits and growth potential abroad. But Tanya, you know, one of the reasons I've always heard for why particularly U.S. investors have that home country bias is there's so many big, dominant multinational companies that are here in the U.S. that get a lot of their revenue from overseas. So you're kind of already getting that global exposure. Is that true? You know, advisors really recognize the importance of diversified portfolios. But as the world became more globalized, some of these theoretical diversification benefits were expected to wane as companies expanded their global footprint. Interestingly enough, the exact opposite has been the case. The average international revenue growth of U.S. companies in the S&P 500 has been decelerating over the last couple of years as companies abroad start to take a larger market share. We expect this trend to continue, powered by the strong economic growth prospects of developing markets. So let's get into the weeds a little bit and talk about some of the mechanics of international ETFs. Let's talk about the process for launching a new international fund. What steps do you take to make sure that things are really going to work out there in the marketplace and really solve a problem for advisors? I guess, Tanya? You know, Dave, it's really easy to come up with an idea. The hard part, and where we spend the most of our time, is ensuring that we can bring a high quality solution to the market for our clients. This involves working with the iShares product teams to ensure that the product meets its design details, its investment objectives, its investment universe. Through a portfolio simulation process, we can determine if a product idea has sound investment thesis, commercial viability, and operational feasibility. We typically generate multiple iterations of portfolio simulations. Ultimately, the product design and creation process is an iterative and collaborative one between the iShares and MSCI teams. Well, Tanya, Anna, thanks so much for joining us here. It's been great to learn a little bit more about how you think about investing in international markets. Visit www.ishares.com to view a prospectus, which includes investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information that you should read and consider carefully before investing. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal.